Hello, this is Bill Webb, a.k.a. Billy Indiana, and today I'm going to do an unboxing for the latest release by Stonemaier Games, Red Rising. Let's take a look and see what's inside this box. Before we open up the box, let me give you a little backstory in case you haven't heard. Probably most of you have, but... This is a game by Jamie Stegmeyer and Alexander Schmidt, and it was released just recently, and uh, it was based on the trilogy by Pierce Brown, these books, Red Rising, Golden Sun, and Morning Star, and also was inspired by the game Fantasy Realms by Bruce Glasgow and produced by WizKids. So uh, that's a little bit of the connections where this game come, came from in terms of its inspiration thematically and even mechanically. Uh, so now let's go ahead and start digging into this game, Red Rising. By the way, I have uh, played Fantasy Realms because of recommendation of um, Jamie Stegmeier through watching a lot of his videos of his favorite games. And that's one of the reasons that I was very interested in Red Rising because I loved Fantasy Realms so much based on his recommendation. And also started reading the books based on his rec uh, recommendation. Hadn't actually heard of the books before and have uh, been reading them since i heard about red rising kind of a slow reader so uh, i'm actually just finishing up the third book right now so uh, if we look at this one it says in here we're entering a futuristic universe of red rising based on the book series by pierce brown featuring a dystopian society divided into 14 casts you represent a house attempting to rise to power as you piece together an assortment of followers. Will you break the chains of society or embrace the dominance of the golds? Uh, in our components here, we can see there's going to be 80 helium tokens, which are the red gems, 60 influence tokens, 6 fleet tokens, and we'll break that out. You can see some of the characters here. Uh, Daro is the key character. Ragnar is one of his sidekicks. Orion and Severo, Mustang, Mickey, Eevee, Eo. So if you've been reading the books or you have read the books, you'll recognize those key players in the story. Um, let's go ahead and see what's inside the box here. Uh, on the side, it says it's a 40 to 60 minute game from one to six players, ages 14 and up. The cover is really striking to me. I did get the collector's edition, as you can see here. Um, and I really like the art there's been you know people who like it and people who don't but let's push that off to the side here first thing we see is the overview and rule book here so um, that nice linen finish that stonemeyer games is becoming quite well known for and i think other others are using that as well big pages uh, nice layout pictures are clear um, and pretty short yeah uh, really only seven pages of instruction. The last page here just gives the picture of the different casts and then some other things, places you can go online if you have questions or want to watch um, how to play videos. So there's the rule book. And then we've got the Tull Automa. Here are the solo rules. And that's another thing I really love about Stonemaier games. And I admit I'm a little bit of a Stonemaier fanboy. I like many of his games, uh, their games. It's not always that he made the game, but all, many of the games from Stonemaier. Um, and I really like the fact that almost all of them, especially all the newer ones, do come with a solo mode. I can't always find someone to play, and so it's nice to have that. Some baggies to sort things, although I think, uh, being the collector, collector's edition, there's going to be um, a really nice arrangement inside that probably the baggies won't be necessary. Nice uh, thick cardboard tiles for the different backs, uh, factions, for the different groups. So we've got Diana, we've got Ceres. Apollo, Jupiter, Mars, and Minerva, the primary groups that you read about in the first book. And then here is the game board. And the game board is really just a playing area for you to play your cards and keep track of your points. Um, again, I haven't played the game yet, but I've watched a number of videos. I've been following along with the notes from Jamie. And um, so you see there's a Jupiter column, a, Sa a Mars column, a Luna, and an Institute. Um, and so that's where you're going to play the cards. And this is where the main cards will lie. And this is your fleet track, one of the ways you can end the game from what I'm understanding. And then the Institute here where you're also going to keep track of victory points. So nice board game there. Or game board, I mean. I've got this cover. 
um, clear plastic. It doesn't seem to snap in place, so hopefully it'll hold all the components well. Got the scoreboard with a nice place for it to clearly fit. And I know that now there's also a scoring app that has been created by one of the fans. And so I'll put a link for that page down in the description below. So if you're interested in finding that app, you can. And we've got the die. Wow, a nice, big, chunky die. And we'll put some of these things under the close-up camera so you can see them a little better. We've got the helium tokens, which will be stored in the wolf head and the wolf, the howlers part of the storyline, again, for those of you that know um, about the story. So that'll look really nice in the game, um, having that container. We've got the, I think this is the so called the sovereign token. Again, we can put some of these under the close-up camera here in a little bit to show you the details. And then this looks like the bag of all the different um, trackings. So if we've got some gold, some violet, some blue, and all the casts in the storyline are based on color. So and we've got some green and uh, another color of purple, maybe the pinks, and then some bronze. So we can show those under the close-up camera again to give you a better look. And then we've got the Luna symbol. I think this is... Uh, tracking something in the game as well. If you look at the cards down here, looks like this is the Automa pack of cards. And then we've got two packs of cards here. And different backs, at least on the surface here. Um, although it looks like on the front, they're both different kinds of playing cards. So we'll open these up and show uh, some of the cards in the close up as well. And then another feature of the game. Uh, it's in the collector's edition at least. There are these card holding racks for you to put the cards in. So let me open up the cards and we'll put some of these things under the close-up camera so you can see them in a little bit better detail. So these are the primary components we'll take a look at first. You've already kind of seen them from a distance, but uh, the scorebook here allows you to keep track of your points and the variety of different ways that you earn points. And then like we showed the wolf head with the um, helium tokens inside. And then these I think are somehow related to the Automa. I'm not exactly sure if they're for the Automa or the base game, uh, but on the one side they have this nice uh, green back and on the other side the A, B, C, and D. And then we've got the Automa cards. This is um, the Luna bonus, I believe, card that you use in the Automa. And then these are the other Automa cards that um, you play through some instruction cards determining odd or even. And then these are the cards that you actually play when you're playing solo, which is probably how I'll play first. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting into the instructions and learning how this works. So that is that. Over here we've got the um, cardboard faction um, tokens or boards, I guess, little um, tiles here for the different houses, the Minerva house, Mars house, Jupiter, Apollo, and series and it looks like each one has its own little bonus or advantage over the others and then Diana really love the art uh, love the mix up of those and then with the each house you've got the uh, reference card for each player so that they can see the setup turnover view and iconography there all right then we've got the rising die and so you can see the different things you could roll if you roll the rising die or the fleet or the institute and again i'll have to read through the instructions to see what all of these different things mean and we've got the sovereign token which i think if you have this at the end of the game you have uh, bonus points and then this is the first player token of the luna token and here is what i think is um, sort of the homage to the books is looking at the characters and oh this is the Nice gold foil here on the edge, and Aja, if you've read the books, you know about her. Pretty fierce warrior, one of the golds. Um, and so I'll just go through these pretty quickly because there's uh, over a hundred of them, so I won't look at all of them, but I'll look at a few of them. So Antonia, another key character, the Ash Lord, the Bone Riders, Cassius, another one that you can learn about early in the books, Fitchner, Boyo, that looks cool, Carnus. Lorne, Lysander, Mustang, oh, I really love the art here, Nero, 
Octavia, Axe, <laughs> one of my favorites, Romulus, Roke, Severo, really interesting character, Tactus, the Howlers as a group, the Jackal, if you haven't read the books, you'll see he's an interesting character, the Telemannuses as a family there, Victra, all right, and then we get into some of the other factions. So those are the golds, really nice gold foiling. It's got this gold foiling here where it says gold under the name. Um, and then it also has that gold foiling on the edges there. And then there's this iconography here, a color, a pattern here to show you. Like for Victor, it says, gain the bottom card of this location if it's not this card. Banish Victor unless you deploy her on a gold. Plus 10 if with the Howlers, plus 10 if, the, if with Severo or Darrow. And then you've got the colors here to kind of show you there's uh darrow i'm not sure if it's darrow or darrow I, I think i read it in my head as darrow and then you've got severo there and then you've got the howlers there so it kind of shows you what it relates to with those little icons there those little color strips and then we'll just go through these a little bit more quickly we've got all the different colors the violets the coppers the oranges the obsidians the reds the oranges silvers, grays, the pinks, Dancer's a key character, here's the hero of the story, <laughs> so I'll just fl flip through some more of these here so you can see there's Eo, another one of the heroes in the story, Evie, and then some of these are more generic characters like Firewall Expert here. Some of the colors, honestly, are kind of generic in their roles in this society. So it really is, if you know the stories, there really is a lot of um, theme through how these cards work, I think. And even just, um, if, like I said, I think if, if you know the stories, you're going to be able to kind of dig into who these people are, what their roles are. And I think the art and the names are going to make sense for what these roles are, like Lone Shark in the Silver Group and Magistrate in the White Group. Um, so there's a, a mix of actual characters like Mickey the Carver, who you find out about pretty early on, um, and then others that are just like musician, just generic. So really cool. Like I said, I'm not going to read all of them, but let you see the art here. It's fun for me having been reading the books recently. And there's the Pax. So Pax is a character and then the Pax as actually um, one of the fleet uh, ships. Theodora, Timony, Trig, Ugly Dan. It's funny to me too just to see the characters, what they've been portrayed as. I've been reading these books and so uh, seeing them put to, brought to life in the art is really cool. And then just a couple other things. Um, the tokens that you use are really nice, heavy, actual metal. You've got your fleet tracker and then your scoring cubes uh, to use at the Institute. And there have been some people that have been concerned about the colors and that there's not a huge difference. For instance, this is the copper and the gold. But to me, I think it's pretty clear when you have them side by side. Um, and then a couple others that I think are a little bit maybe uh, similar for some. And that's the pinks and the violets. Um, uh, but again, it's a little bit hard to see. You got a little bit of a glare here. They look a little bit more alike in the camera. Uh, I think though in person, I can I can definitely see the difference. Um, so I really love the way they feel in the heft. And then here are the greens and the blues. To me, they don't show up the difference as much in the camera as they do in person. Uh, but if you have a difficulty detecting those those uh, small differences, you might not be able to see that as well. Uh, however, it really doesn't make a difference in the gameplay from what I can tell because you just are going to cluster your cubes together. And so as long as you know where you've been clustering your cubes, it shouldn't be hard to tell. And there's not that many of them to track. You can see this is all for each color. So that is Red Rising and here is how it all fits back in the box. You can see all the different tokens for each house are there, the dice and then the two metal tokens there. Uh, the wolf head fits nicely, the cards fit nicely, the uh, card holders fit well uh, right in here. So everything has a good place to fit. 
scorecard goes right here um, and fits nicely. The only concern I have is um, this side feels a little bit roomy and the bottom isn't exactly flat. Um, it's like fit, it's shaped to fit the cards exactly on the bottom, but then it's roomy on the top. And so if you sleeve the cards, I'm not sure how that's going to work. And um, these kind of bounce around if you don't sleeve them. So I think that's going to be okay. I don't think it'll be a problem. This side worries me a little bit more. Um, there's the smaller section underneath where you can put the smaller Automa cards. But then if you put the other cards on top, it's the smaller cutout isn't that much different than the bigger cards. And they kind of want to slide down in. And I was afraid some of the cards might get warped. So I'm putting the cardboard house tiles down first to try to hopefully avoid that fault them falling into that and then getting warped it just doesn't seem to be like a perfect fit it feels like there may be just a little bit of a a little too big there i think it'll be okay though and i like the way it looks uh the way it all fits together uh then you put the plastic cover on to kind of lock everything in place again i hope that this will hold everything with that falling over i hope i usually store games like this that have a nice cover vertically so hopefully they won't fall all over the board fits right uh nicely right there then obviously the manuals and the cover. So uh, I'm very excited about this game. I'm very grateful that Jamie didn't give up on his desire to create the game. He went through a lot of iterations and struggled. And then finally, uh, as he was working with Alexander Schmidt, came up with what we now know as Red Rising. So I'm excited to play it um, and uh, looking forward to figuring out how it plays it solo first and then bringing in some family members to see if they enjoy it as well. So you can look forward. I'm sure I'll be putting up a review once I've had a chance to play it a few times. But that is Red Rising, the unboxing. So I hope that was helpful for you to see what comes in the Red Rising Collector's Edition. Edition. Um, if you enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you'd click on the like down below. That'll help me out. And it'd be terrific if you'd subscribe to the channel. If you've played Red Rising already, or if you ordered it and are looking forward to it, or if you've played Fantasy Realms or read the books, leave a comment down below and tell me what you like about the books or what you don't like about Fantasy Realms, or even Red Rising itself if you've had a chance to play. I'd love to read your comments down below. As always, thanks for watching. This is Billy Indiana, signing off. Uh -huh.